there has been a lot of talk about the third wave uh, that is going to hit India and how people are worried that uh, in this third wave children are going to be more affected. Therefore the kind of prediction is maybe around September to October we would be seeing the third wave of infection and we have already seen that happening in the western countries we have already seen that happening in America as well. So it is naive for us to think that it is not going to happen in India, right? And why is this more importance given to uh, children being affected? Number one, children have become now a little more vulnerable population. Why I mean to say vulnerable is because this is the age group that we have not vaccinated. And mainly the vaccinations have covered the elderly age group. Now we are doing 18 to 45 years of age group that leaves majority of the children less than 18 years of age group unimmunized or non-vaccinated. So this being the first point. The second one is we have seen the infectivity rate um, has increased from 5 to 10 percent from the first wave to almost 20 percent in the second wave. So to alleviate all your fears, majority of them are going to be asymptomatic. When I say majority, almost 70 percent according to the data or asymptomatic children. That means even if your child has got a COVID infection, they will not show any signs or symptoms of COVID infection. Then come to the children who become symptomatic. Right? In those children, again majority of them are going to have very mild symptoms. Okay? In 1 in 10,000 of those children who have symptoms, there is a likelihood of that child developing you know severe problems and therefore need for hospitalization or requirement of a high dependency or an ICU bed. The rest of them have got fantastic immunity, believe in your children, they are all going to get better even if they were to get this infection. Firstly, people who are eligible for vaccination, please take it. You know, it is your duty to take the vaccination when it is made available. By doing that, you are preventing yourself from getting moderate or severe uh, cases of infection. Why should I say this is because COVID-19 infection is not just going to affect the body, human system. It is going to affect the whole of your family system. Because once a, a family get, member get infected and they get admitted to the hospital, you know, the, there is a huge disruption and then there is a whole lot of anxiety that comes with it. Therefore, protect yourself first. Secondly, e even if you get vaccinated, you're still bound to acquire the infection. So you still will carry the viruses because once the lockdown is over, you're all going to go back to work. You'll work in the industries, you'll work in the factories and offices. There you're bound to acquire these infections. You may not get the disease. But imagine you go home, your children are sitting there at home, right? So you need to therefore follow COVID appropriate behavior. Then when you come back from work, don't just go and hug your children, right? Go to your uh, washroom first, take off your clothes and wash that in, in hot water. Then maybe take shower. That is the time you come back and, um, and have a family togetherness with your loved ones. This way you will actually prevent your children from getting the infection. Whenever the vaccine comes in for children, don't be hesitant again. Don't make it a political game, right? Try and get your children vaccinated. And then hopefully by then we should be seeing that schools are opening up for more than 12 year old. And then once we get the vaccination for less than 12 year olds, we should start thinking about opening schools for less than 12 year olds. Because the COVID infection is not just affecting as a disease, it is causing a lot of psychosocial trauma amongst the communities and the families. If your child were to get the COVID infection, don't get worried about it. You know, as I told you, majority of them are going to be asymptomatic. Some of the symptoms that you need to be watching for are fever, sore throat. Your child might tell that it's got, you know, joint and ache pains in the, in the muscles. Then uh, they might also have some stomach pain. Some children are exhibiting vomiting and loose motions as, as, as the symptoms. So majority of these symptoms get treatable with 
um, common medications like paracetamol keep your child very well hydrated all the time you can use ORS you can give uh, uh, coconut water fresh fruit juices some uh, sort of vitamins um, sometimes your doctors will prescribe the probiotics for the uh, for the loose motions so all of these can be taken care at home itself and from motherhood again we are planning to have these online consultations for children who are going to be positive and uh, your child will be supervised and looked after by trained pediatricians so no need to worry about it and I'm uh, I'm reiterating that only very small minuscule amount of uh, population in children might need hospitalization right and who are they and what are those symptoms that you need to be worried about these are the kids where three to four days of unremitting uh, fever and, and high grade fevers even not uh, working for paracetamol or if your child you know unfortunately has too many episodes of diarrhea and vomiting not able to have that sort of an intake and become dehydrated or in some children unfortunately if they develop respiratory problems and then they start needing a little bit of oxygen or the work of breathing is a bit more those are the children who might be uh, you know requiring hospital beds the third category of symptoms are for smaller age group babies which are less than two years of age it is very difficult for people to understand and identify the symptoms in these uh, age group of babies that is why we suggest them to be more under supervision uh, with your uh, general pediatricians then the fourth category are the group or the ones who are immunocompromised we know unfortunately a lot of children have got cancers as well uh, children who've got diabetes children uh, who are ex premature babies and then suffer from chronic lung disease and needing home oxygen children who've got congenital heart diseases these are the children who are usually immunocompromised and they are the ones needs to be really watched out very carefully and should be under the care of a pediatric team so number one say for example husband wife are positive children is not positive in those circumstances you can still take care of your child it is very hard to isolate a child you know especially less than 10 years of age no need to worry and keep a watch out of the symptoms that i already suggested if your child would develop these any of these symptom then obviously we need to check for covid infection as well there is this second circumstance where your child is positive but parents are negative and you would have normally tested because your child is symptomatic right so in these circumstances very hard to isolate a child and look after therefore you as a family has to come together and then look after the child it's very hard for us to separate a, a child when they've got the infection and going through fevers and you know coughs and colds but try and see how much ever minimum that you can you know minimize your contact with your child there are other circumstances where mother is you know the the lady is pregnant and she's given birth to a baby and, uh, and and mother is covid positive so this we face a lot of uh, uh, times and no need to panic again as i said majority i have not seen even one baby who's got any sort of a serious covid related infection so far so in these circumstances what do we do please breastfeed the baby no contraindication absolutely at all next again mother is taking care of herself with the covid protective behavior and also the baby so there is a lot of questions that, that has been asked about uh, re regular routine vaccination for children. We have to vaccinate our children. There is no second thoughts about it at all. Why do we do this? It is because your children are going through formative years and they are building their immune system. This is when the vaccine related diseases can affect the children. For example, diphtheria, pertussis, you know, measles. So we know that for, for ages, I have not looked after any child with diphtheria or measles. That's because they have been prevented by absolute brilliant vaccination programs right across the world. So now we cannot let that guard go down. If, you, if uh, enough number of children are not vaccinated, the immunity of the whole community or the herd immunity, what we call, will drop down. This is when there will be emergence of vaccine related diseases in, in children. So from motherhood, for example, if you're worried that you don't want to come to the hospitals because of the COVID infection, 
uh, we have designed programs where we can bring the vaccinations to your homes have online consultation with the doctors and therefore they can prescribe these vaccinations bring those vaccination absolutely looking after the cold chain and then vaccinate still your babies and children in uh, utmost safety at the end of it all i would like to wish all your family a good health and be safe there are a lot of uh, work being done behind the scenes to to prepare for the third wave of the covid if it doesn't happen we are very very happy and that's the best circumstances if it happens inadvertently then i think we are going to be prepared so don't worry don't panic